the Easter. Uh, I've never looked at Easter from the Roman, Greco-Roman perspective, where it's Easter, which is a Greco-Roman goddess, a goddess of fertility and etc. That's why you find all these rabbits that are around speaking of sex, then eggs speaking of fertility. Then they make the children in Easter, and then the children will be born in December 25 or in the month of December. Then they would sacrifice those children. So the, 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 the Roman Greco space is not actually, Easter is not actually a clean thing. It comes to us with a very complex, uh, quote unquote, pagan, totally out. There's no way you can be talking about Easter bunnies and Easter eggs and hot cross buns. Then you need to, if you go into each one of those components and find out. And this for me, by the way, is the way it gets interesting. Young people must, must research and, and just do, do a Google Easter bunnies and <laughs> bunnies, Easter buns and Easter eggs. What is the history of these things? Just type it on a phone right now. You will find a totally different picture from what the church is celebrating as the death of Jesus. But should we then move over into the death of Jesus as being Passover or Easter? We can't do that without understanding the Israeli Hebrew background, which talks of a nation trapped in colonialism, in slavery, in Egypt, using the biblical text. Whether that is true or not, it's a conversation for another day. But the biblical text will tell us that Amantone was Israel were locked up in, in Egypt. And then their God, spiritual intervention says to moses let my people go and when he comes into egypt he says before you go collect some money the offerings from the egyptians just tell them we want some gold and silver so that we can worship our god in the wilderness that was their payment for the 400 years of slavery they had gone through and in the night then kill a lamb and after killing a lamb then put the blood on your doorposts go inside the house roast the thing and eat and prepare and go on the same night god was busy killing the firstborns of the egyptians and in the morning early morning they left to depart now if you look at that storyline then we don't need to discuss easter in the spiritual context we need to discuss easter in the political context that actually easter and passover is a political liberation of a people that are stuck in a slave system and if you can take that concept of Passover and move it to Africans, juxtaposing it with the resurrection of Jesus, are we going to be resurrected on Sunday <laughs> as Africans? Free from the colonial budgets, free from the colonial health system, free from the colonial education systems, free from the colonial economy, free from the colonial political system. So you find that these are just celebrations that we are doing without necessarily actually appreciating the depth of the celebration itself. And I wish Christians would go back and ask, where are we now? We're in Egypt, on our own land. <laughs> but we are slaves on our own land. So for me, Easter does not bring in the, 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 the excitement and the euphoria of uh, Jesus hanging on a cross and Christians must feel sorry for that. It must actually raise in us a repatriation, a, a walking back of some sort, a living this to that, whether it is a mental walking, Emotional walking, psychological walking, spiritual walking, political walking, but ideological walking away from Egypt. And beautiful part to our oppressors is that before we leave, we need payment for the years that you've abused us. <laughs> now, to me, that's theology. Because you cannot talk about liberation without restitution, reparations, and repayments. And the Easter concept for me, I don't even think a pinch of the ministers who are promoting the death and resurrection of Jesus, understand the background of Passover. But should we decide to discuss it from the crucifixion of Jesus? Again, as a philosopher, I stand back and I look and I say, so who has been crucified? Is the white man on the cross? Or is the black man on the cross? Who are the two thieves on the left? Are these not the Chinese and the Americans? <laughs> and the Africans are hanging at the center. What does that mean for us as Africans? And who are the Romans? Who are the Dutch? Who crucified Jesus? Are we not struggling right now under the Roman Dutch concept? Concept. So has Jesus dropped from the cross? The answer is no. Jesus is still hanging on the cross with the two thieves who are robbing African people of their own resources. So, and pardon me, because this might actually throw you into the deep end. 
and this is my line of specialty in terms of theology. Yeah. So when it comes to interpretation, I actually feel that we are doing the text a disfavor by only looking at the cosmetic part of Jesus hung on the cross, he died, and he resurrected for us. But when you come back to it and say, how have we been crucified? Who has crucified us? Who is hanging on the cross with us? When are we going to go to bear it? Is there a resurrection? I see Africa being pushed into the dark continent. But I see the resurrection of a brand new morning. When the African child is now waking up. The African Renaissance, the Pan-African movement. The movement that is now happening. So to us, Sunday is not a day after Saturday. Sunday to us is a length of time. Mm. After a moment of crucifixion and burial of our culture and society into oblivion, then early morning there's a voice of the watcher shouting from the mountaintop, resurrect and awake and awake. And the African children begin to put aside the clothes of the night, the pajamas of the night, and they wake up and come out of the catacombs of being a forgotten nation. And they can begin to live again. So, so when you talk about Easter for me, you move certain parts of my spirit in the, in, in, in the real sense of understanding where the continent is and how mysteriously that is extrapolated and duly interpreted and duplicated in the biblical narrative of what you call Passover and Easter. If there's a message you'd like to say to younger guys right now, um, who are saying Good Friday, and um, not only just all Christians, what would, what would you like to say to them? The people who crucified you on the cross will never take you down from it. <laughs> they actually want to make sure that before sunset we are dead. So we need to make a plan as African children to say on this cross, when you start thinking, how do we come off this cross? Because we are still alive. We are still alive. So we need to have a conversation that speaks of resuscitation, pulling each other off the chains of economic oppression, political oppression, ideological oppression, and pulling each other down before we die. But should it be that some have already died, we have good news that the season we are now living in is the season of a resurrection. So the message I have, if you find a brother, you find a sister who is on the cross, come on, stop a little bit. Don't shout and say, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. But and then you do the poor, the PhD situation of pulling him down. When you hear that a brother is, is hanging on the cross, when you hear that a brother has been crucified on the cross, I think we cannot go there also with hammers and extra nails to make sure God is and yeah. I think for the colonial mindset, that sounds very, very appetizing. When a brother is in trouble, Finish him off. But for me, pass over. Then it becomes deep. Pass over. <laughs> don't, don't, don't get indulged in the anger of the institutions and the systems. Cross over. When you see your blood, <laughs> when you see your blood on my doorpost, when you see your likeness on my doorpost, when you see 